So Pokemon Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon have a neat reference in it, possibly even considered a tribute to Satoru Iwata. So you can get an exchange to happen in the virtual Game Freak offices, uh, which are located in Ultra Sun and Moon's Hia Hia City. Uh, but the exchange only happens if you happen to be holding a monster from the 3DS Virtual Console. And I discovered this through uh, Joe Merrick from Cerebi.net. Uh, and when he discovered it, he said, in this case, uh, it's a Pokemon from Pokemon Silver. And it says, if you meet those requirements, a character can say the following to you. Boy, when we were told halfway through development to make Kanto 2, I thought I must just expire on the spot. But I'm glad we made it that way. When we were having trouble fitting all the data in for gold and silver, and we were really in a pinch, this amazing guy came along and made a program for us that solved all of our problems. He went on to become the amazing president of a real big company soon after that, too. Now, when you hear that, you might be thinking, oh, I must be reading an interview. No, no, no. I'm actually reading, and I'm showing on the screen, screenshots of this conversation happening inside Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon. And, of course, the guy that saved Pokemon Silver and Gold, the guy that made Pokemon Stadium possible, the guy who went on to become the amazing president of a real big company, was the late Satura Iwata. He was an essential part of many aspects of Nintendo before he ever, ever technically worked at Nintendo. He was at HAL Laboratories at the time. So it's amazing just seeing that this reference is in there, and it lets you know just how far-reaching Satoru Iwata's influence was across every company that had any association with Nintendo dating back decades. And it's just really interesting because... Uh, for those who don't know, Iwata did uh, played a major role in the Pokemon franchise in so much as he created a compression algorithm uh, that allowed Pokemon Silver and Gold to be compressed down onto Game Boy cartridges. Uh, he made the battle system uh, work fun functionally work properly on the Nintendo 64 for Pokemon Stadium. He made Smash Bros. possible. Uh, on the Nintendo 64 by recoding a bunch of stuff. I mean, it's, it's no secret by now, if you know anything about Satoru Iwata beyond his CEO days, is that he was probably one of the greatest mastermind video game programmers of all time. He, he was just truly a savant when it came to video game programming. I mean, he himself, uh, in an Iwata Ask, where he talked about... Uh, I'm sorry, Iwata, Iwata Asks, uh, where he talks about how... He uh, became part of this whole uh, Pokemon thing where he talks about uh, his experiences in, you know, creating these algorithms and condensing things and making all this Pokemon stuff possible. Um, you know, he, he talks about that, about how he's a programmer. Like, they're, they're, they mentioned him as CEO here, but, like, he, he was very literally a programmer there, even though he was a higher up at HAL Laboratories. Um, he, he was more so a programmer than anything else. It's just a very touching story. Uh, because I don't, you know, I'm not buying Pokemon Ultra Sun, Ultra Moon. I didn't buy Sun and Moon. I am going to buy Pokemon on Switch, but it's still really nice here to see the Game Freak Studios, you know, the people making these games, put in this small mention in tribute to Iwata. Uh, it kind of fits the theme for this year because Nintendo Switch also, if you guys remember, we reported on the story before, where the Switch itself has a tribute, a hidden tribute to Iwata uh, in the Mario Golf game, which was one of the very first games Satoru Iwata ever worked on at HAL Laboratories uh, for the NES and how you have to do the direct to you on the day of his death um, to to make the game launch on Switch. And so a lot of us uh, coming up in June will be attempting to do that uh, because we... Ourselves, I, I, I don't know about you guys, but I myself have always wanted to pay tribute to him or at least enjoy a tribute to him. Um, I've obviously made a video way back when he passed away uh, talking about how he's affected my life inadvertently. He didn't know me, uh, but through his work, uh, it, it massively impacted my life growing up. Uh, and it was a very hard video for me to make back then. I, I cried, I think, throughout the whole video because of how much Satoru Iwata meant to me. Uh, just in terms of my childhood. And 
it, it's rare that you find out about just a, a programmer, right? Uh, programmers uh, generally don't rise to become massive CEOs of huge companies like Nintendo. You just it doesn't happen. Like Miyamoto is not a programmer. Uh, he's a well-known figurehead, and he's created a lot of amazing stuff, but he himself is not actually like this savant programmer like Satoru Iwata is. So it, it's just, or was. I That's the, the weird thing. Like We're talking about this person who passed away, and the Pokemon company Game Freak put it, throwing this little tribute in there. And I guess there's only one fitting way to end this video, uh, and it's the same way that Joe Merrick ended his tweet on... Uh, Twitter about the, this specific instance in the game. Thanks, Awada. I'm Nathaniel Rumpeljance from Nintendo Prime. If you like this video, you know what to do. And if you dislike the video, hit that dislike button. Subscribe for more content, and I'll catch you in the next one. Yes.